Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا هيا على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. In the name of Allah, the merciful, benefactor, the merciful, redeemer. And alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusna wa min sayyati amalina min yahdihi lahu falamudilla lahu wa min yudlil falahadiyya lahu wa ashahadu ala illaha illallahu wa dahu la sharika lahu Wa anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasulu. Unquestionably, the perfect praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never, ever be led astray, and whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Rabbi shrafli sadri wa yasadli amri wa la tu'ukla tami li sani yakkahu kaw. Oh my Lord, expand my chest for me. Make my task easy for me. Remove the impediment from my tongue so they may understand what I say. Allah tells us in the Quran or commands us in the Quran to say, Kul inna solati nusiki wa mahyaya wa mahmati lillahi rabbi al alameen la sharika lahu wa bidalika umirtu wa ana awlul muslimin. Say, surely my sacrifice, surely my prayer, my sacrifice, <clears throat> my life and my death are all for Allah, Lord of all systems, knowledge. He has no partner, so I am commanded and I am the first to be Muslim. We thank Allah for this day of Juma. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week. 
We thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude, our thanks to him for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah al-Majid, the most glorious one, the most honorable one. Al-Majid means the one who has the most glory, the most honor, who is dignified, noble, and glorious. It is a name that encompasses several other attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. He is the only one deserving of all the praise and all the honor because he is all glorious. We pray and we strive so that perhaps others are guided by Al-Majid, the glorious one, to this mercy and this blessing called Al-Islam. I wanted to start this khutbah today with some of the creatures of Al-Majid. Some in particular, a group of frogs, is what I want to start this story off with. A group of frogs was hopping through the woods, going about their frog business. And then two of them fell into a deep pit. And all of the other frogs gathered around the pit to see if they could help their friends. And they saw how deep the pit was, and the group of frogs agreed that it was a hopeless, helpless situation and the two frogs inside of the pit should prepare themselves for their fate because they were as good as dead. Unwilling to accept their terrible fate, the two frogs began to jump with all of their might while the other frogs shouted on top of the pit that it is hopeless, it's helpless. They said this situation is dire, you should have been more careful. You should have obeyed the frog rules and laws. You should have been more responsible. The other frogs were sadly shouting that save your energy and give up because you are as good as dead. But those two frogs continued jumping inside of this pit as hard as they could. And after several hours of desperate jumping, they got tired. And finally, one of them took heed to what the other frogs were saying. He was tired, he was disheartened. He quickly resolved and resolute to his fate of dying. He laid down on his back in the bottom of the pit and died as the other frogs looked on in despair. And the other frog continued to jump, however, with, all of, with every ounce of energy he had in his body. Although he was in great pain, and he was almost completely exhausted. But his companions, his friends, were at the top of the hole still saying, give up, accept your fate, stop the pain and give up and just die. This weary frog jumped as hard and as high as he could and finally, finally, he jumped so high that he sprang out of the pit. And amazed, the other frogs celebrated this miraculous feat and effort that he had and they gathered around him and said, why, why did you continue to jump despite the fact that we told you that it was impossible? And in the story it says, reading their lips, this astonished frog explained to them that he was deaf and that he was seeing their gestures and shouting as them cheering for him. What he was perceiving as encouragement inspired him to try as hard as he could and ultimately succeed against all love. This simple story contains a powerful, powerful lesson. Your encouraging words can lift someone up and help them make their way through their day and through their lives. Or your destructive words can cause them deep wounds. They may be weapons that could be used by others to destroy them. Your destructive, careless words can diminish someone in the eyes of others destroy their influence and have a lasting effect on the way other people respond to them. So use your words wisely. Imam Warafdin Muhammad said, words make mind and mind makes man. You think of the ideas as words, positive and negative thoughts. Bring positive and negative words and ultimately positive and negative actions. 
words shape your world and your worldview and how you act and ultimately how the world will view you. Words that you think of. Sometimes these words, if you don't say them, they are also impactful. They could be a sign of your silence, could be a sign of your strength of or your weakness. So use your silence of speech wisely as well. The son of Umar, radiallahu anhu, reported a story of our prophet, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was talking to all the companions and said, tell me of a tree that resembles a Muslim man. It le its leaves don't fall, but it continues to bear fruit. And Umar's son said, it came to my mind that such a tree would be called a palm tree. But he looked at Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and he looked at Umar, his father, and said, they weren't speaking, so I didn't speak. So nobody answered. And ultimately, our prophet answered for himself and said that it was the palm tree. And when they had departed, Umar said to his father, he said, oh, my father, by Allah, it did come to my mind that it was a date palm tree. And Umar said to his son, what prevented you from speaking? And he said, I didn't speak because you didn't speak, and no one else spoke. And Umar said to his son, if you had answered, it would have been dear to me. So Umar would have been proud of his son for answering the question of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he didn't speak because he was bashful or because of his humility. Sometimes speaking, sometimes not speaking can be helpful or harmful. We have to be able to discern which one it is. A Muslim author, a Muslim artist, had a song that says, words I never said. And in that song he says, I think that all the silence is worse than all the violence. Fear is such a weak emotion, that's why I despise it. Sometimes not saying words can be harmful because your words could, could make a difference. Another Sahaba, Abu Sayyid, was telling of the time when the Prophet Muhammad was giving a khutbah. And one of the things he said was, indeed, fear of people should not prevent a man from speaking truth, if he knows it. And then Abu Sayyid began to cry. He said, by Allah, we have seen things that made us scared, and we did not speak up. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhi amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawla sadira. O believers, be mindful of your Lord and say a word to the right. Allah continues by saying, He will bless your deeds for you if you say a word to the right, if you say the truth. And He will forgive your sins just for speaking the truth. So we are commanded to say what is right. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, truth leads to piety and piety leads to paradise. A man who persists in speaking the truth will ultimately be recorded by Allah as a truthful man. But falsehood leads to transgression and transgression leads to the hell fire. And a man who continuously tells falsehoods will be recorded by Allah as a wajal, as a great liar. So we hear these sayings about speaking the truth. Speak truth to power. Speak the truth even if your voice shakes. Speak the truth even if you are alone. Truth is reality, and that reality comes from Allah. He is Al-Haq. He is the ultimate truth, the ultimate reality. That's what Al-Haq means, the truth, the reality. So all truth, all truth that you ever experience throughout your life disseminates from Allah. Every true word or thought that you have ever thought or said comes from Allah. We did not make it up or come up with it on our own. Sometimes we think ourselves clever and give ourselves too much credit. We, have, we may have found the truth, but none of us have created the truth or come up with the truth. This is all from Allah. And he created everything Bilhaqi, he says, in truth. He says, Wahu waladi kalaka samawati wal orda bilhaqi, wa yaumil yakulu kan bakun payakun kaulul haku. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth, 
in truth. On the day, he will say, be, and there will be. His word is the truth. The same is true of all of us, each and every one of us. You are a truth from Allah Azza wa Jal. A word of Allah made manifest. An idea, if I can say that without being blasphemous. You were in the imagination of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he said, be, and you came into existence. This is what you and I are, a word of Allah. Our Christian brothers and sisters are misinformed or they misunderstand with due respect. They think that God only has one word because of their scripture that says the word of God created everything. They believe that Jesus or Isa alayhi salam was the word of God and that he created everything. But Allah as a wajal tells us in the Quran that he sent down the scripture bil haqqi in truth to judge between the people concerning that in which they differ. That means that we, Muslims, all of us, have the truth. We have the answers. Sway. The answers come from the word of Allah, as a wajal, the Quran. The word was not Jesus, the word was be. So everything and everyone created from the word be came into manifestation, then therefore there are billions upon billions upon billions, maybe trillions of God's words. Allah says Jesus or Isa alayhi salam was kalamatin, meaning a word of God. Not al-kalimat, the word of God or the only word of God. In fact, he says Jesus or Isa alayhi salam is like Adam alayhi salam. He says, Inna matala Isa, in the lahi kamalati adama kalakahu min turabi tumma kala lahu kun fayakun. Indeed, the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust and he said, Be and he was. Both of them were created differently from other people, but they themselves were people, were, were human beings. Jesus or Isa alayhi salam without a father and Adam alayhi salam without a mother or a father. This is directly to the misunderstanding of our Christian brothers and sisters. They think that Jesus did not have a father, therefore Allah is his father. But Allah does not have children, any children, at all. Lam yalid ba lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. He's not the father of any of you, and none of you have fathered him. Allah is saying, if you think, if you think Jesus or Isa alayhi salam needed a father, then you have a much bigger problem, because Adam alayhi salam needs a mother and a father. He is saying you have missed the point totally and completely. Allah does not need or does not have to be the, pa the father or mother of anybody. Mary said to the angel Jabril, no man has ever touched me. How can I have a child? And Allah says in response to this, in response to a child without a father, that is easy for me. When I decree a matter, I say, kun for your kun, be, and it comes into existence. Be, that is the word of Allah. And this understanding is coming from the Quran, another word of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran that this is Jesus, son of Mary, and this is a word of truth about which they dispute. A word of truth. This is the power of the words of Allah. The creation is the words of Allah. We must study the creation. Creatures are the words of Allah. We must study them. Human beings are the words of Allah. We must continue to study ourselves. And Al-Quran is the words of Allah, bil haq in truth. So we must continue to study the recitation, Al-Quran. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness.
alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ajma'in may allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his families upon his companions upon his followers all of us all together all over this world Allah commands us in the Quran to say, should I seek a judge other than Allah while he is the one who has revealed to you the book perfectly explained? Those who were given the scriptures know that this is revealed from their Lord Bil Haq in truth. So do not be of those who doubt. And he says, the word of your Lord has been perfected. Bil Haq in truth and justice. None can change his words. These ayat, these verses, are speaking explicitly about the Quran. The words of Allah are perfectly, perfectly preserved. Yet again, the people of the book, the Jews and Christians are misinformed or they misunderstand. They think God inspires prophets to write. And this is not the case. Allah Azza wa Jal puts his words into their mouths. So they are literally, literally uttering the words of Allah. This is why our Quran is so much different than the Bible and any other scripture. The Bible is a book of stories and history mixed with unauthorized hadith of prophets with no isnad, no chain of narration, and seers of the prophet with unreliable and few sources. Yet there are verses, verses in their scriptures that says, God says, I will put my words into his mouth. In fact, there is a prophecy about God putting his words into this man's mouth. One of the prophecies is about the prophet that will return like Moses. And it says explicitly, God says, I will put my words into his mouth. That is not inspiration. That is dictation. Like Ikra, the angel making Muhammad the prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, say the words of Allah. The Quran is the true words of Allah to humanity preserved. And none can change them. And our prophet says, the best of you, the best of the Muslims, the best of the believers are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. He says the best speech, the best words are the words of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance from, guidance from Muhammad the prophet. And he says, not just words, so he breaks down from words to harps, letters. He says, whoever recites a letter, a letter, a harp, from Allah's book, he will receive a reward times 10. And just to make it clear for you, he says, I did not say Aleph Lam Mim is a letter. He said, Aleph is a letter. Mim is a letter. Lam is a letter. So each time you say any of the letters in the Quran, you receive 10 times the blessing. And our prophet says, People who recite the Quran receive a blessing. And if you struggle in reciting the Quran, you get double the blessing because it's not your tongue. This is why we should be eager to learn the words, the most powerful words on this earth, the words of Allah as a wajib. Now I want to end this khutbah with a short story. I began with a story, I want to end with a, another story. It's about this elderly woman was actually Ethiopian woman. She was underneath of a tree. She was in despair, and this man comes up to her and sees her in despair. And he says, Assalamu alaikum. And she says, listen carefully to whatever she says. She says, peace, a word from a merciful Lord. And then she says, whoever Allah allows to stray, none can guide. She was saying to him that she has lost her way, she's lost. And he says, where are you from? And she says, glory be to the one who took his servant by night from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque. So the sacred mosque, the prophet's mosque, and the furthest mosque was 
and was Mashid al Aqsa in Jerusalem. So she says she was in Jerusalem. And he says, How long have you been in this place? She says, For three nights. And he says, What are you going to eat? And she says, He is the one who provides me with food and with drink. And then this man says, Is there any water for wudu? And she says, if you cannot find water, then purify yourselves with clean earth, wiping your face and your hands. And he says, here, here's some food, have some. And she says, complete the fast until nightfall. And then he says to her, but it's not Ramadan. And she says, whoever does a good deed voluntarily should know that Allah is receptive and all-knowing. And then this man says to her, but it is permitted to break the fast while you're in your journey. And she says, to fast is better if you only knew. And the man says to her, and he asks her, why don't you speak in the same way that I'm speaking to you? And she says, not a single word does a person utter without an observer ready to write it down. Saying that she's very cautious of the words that she says and chooses the words carefully. And he says, which clan do you belong? And she said, do not pursue what you have no knowledge of. And he says, forgive me, for I've certainly made a mistake. And she says, there is no blame on you today. May Allah forgive you. And then he asked, would you like to travel with me? Maybe you can find your caravan. And she says, whatever good you do, Allah knows best. And then, Asked her to mount the camel. And he has the camel to sit down. And she says to him, tell the believing men to lower their gaze. He understood this and turned away. While she was mounting the camel, the camel jerked and her clothes got entangled. And she says, whatever hardship befalls you is because of your own hands, what your own hands have committed. He understood this and untangled her clothing. And she says, and we made Suleiman to understand. And when the journey began, when she got on the camel and started moving, she said, glory be to the one who has subjected these animals to us. And then the man is walking with her while she's on the camel. And he starts singing an Arabic song and walking very fast. And she says, be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. He understood this and started walking slower and lowering his, his voice. Then she says, recite of the Quran that which is easiest for you. He understood this and started reciting the Quran instead of singing the song that he was singing. And then the lady became pleased and she said, but none, ex none accept advice except men of understanding. After reciting the Quran, the man says to her, oh aunt, do you have a husband? And she says, O oh, you who believe, do not ask about matters which, if it made clear to you, may disturb you. And finally, they get to their destination. And she, he asks, do you have any relatives? Do you have any sons that are in this caravan? And she says, wealth and children are my adornment of the life of this world, meaning that she has son in this, sons in this caravan and they have provisions for her. And then he says, are your sons, do they, what do they do? What's their job in here? So maybe he can recognize them. And she says, by landmarks and by the stars, do they find their way? So her sons were guiding the caravan. And he says, can you tell me their names? And she says, we give you good news of a son named Yahya. Then she says, Allah chose Ibrahim as a friend. And then she says, and Allah spoke directly unto Musa saying that her sons was Yahya, Ibrahim, and Musa. And this man understood this. So he called those names, Yahya, Ibrahim, and Musa. And they immediately came towards him. And the lady says, now to one of her sons, now send one of you with silver coins to the city and let them find the purest food and then bring the food back. When they brought the food back, she said to the man and to everyone, eat and drink, joyfully for what you have done in the days gone by to, con 
convey her gratitude for what the man had done and his good deeds. And then she says, is there any reward for good other than good? And this was the end of her and his conversation. I hope that we are familiar with the words that she spoke. The lady was, the lady's son came to inform this man. And this man was one of the Sahabas of the Prophet, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, radiallahu anhu, and she was also a Sahaba of the Prophet. She was also the servant of Lady uh, Fatima, radiallahu anhu. Her name was Lady Fidda. Her son said to the man, my mother has been speaking in this manner using only verses of the Quran in her speech for 20 years. So every word she spoke was words from the Quran, words of Allah as a wajib. So let us all one day be as familiar with the words of Allah as she was, not just reading the words or reciting the words or memorizing the words, but to have them utilize and internalize on everything that we do. Rahim Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Shadu an la ilaha illallah, shadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Al kamati salah, al kamati salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasul. Make sure our lines are straight, don't leave any spaces. <coughs> Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi al-Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik Yawmeddin Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen Sirat al-ladhina anamta alayhim Ghayr al-magdubi alayhim Walad-dolin Amin Ida jaa al-nasrullahi wal-fat wa ara'ayta an-nasad yatkuluna fi dini lahi afwaja bisabbi bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfiruhu innahu kana tawaba Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu lamin hamida Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbi al-Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik yawm ad-Din Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen Sirat al-ladhina anamta alayhim Ghayr al-magdubi alayhim Walad-dolin Amin Kulhu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad Lam yalid wa lam yulad Wa lam yakuluhu kufu wan ahad Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Semi Allahu la min hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah accept our worship. Um, please don't forget your zakat obligations. If you have a cash app, it is dollar sign M-W-S-A-L-A-A-M. You can mail it in at 614 West 35th Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23508. What's going on, brother? I thought that was you, man. I got to come get me some food now. <laughs> or at P.O. Box 1802, Norfolk, Virginia, 23501. We do not have any fish sandwiches, but you still can donate because we are donating for the young people to go to the Muslim Culture Con. So please, if you have any donations, write that on the uh, zakat slip that you are doing it for the uh, Muslim Culture Con for those young people. Um, we do have free snacks in the back and we have some drinks. We have bean pies that are $5. We also have for sale the prayer books and the uh, fasting by Imam Farid in the uh, foyer up front. And I also wanted to make sure that we make du'a for um, Imam Asadi, for um, Brother Oba's son, and for, and for Sister uh, Rashana. She said that she's in the hospital right now, so if anybody is able to visit her, please do so. But definitely, definitely make du'a for them. And like I said, anybody who is not here, they're probably in some hardship, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual. Probably many people are not here because of spiritual hardship. So please make du'a for them. Um, I also wanted to mention on August 11th, there'll be a community meeting, a community meeting for everyone. Everyone is included. Anybody who wants to come to the community meeting, it'll be on Sunday at one o'clock. Uh, so please attend if you are able to and you are interested in building the community. Uh, I do not have the Muslim journals yet, from what I understand. They were shipped today, so inshallah, I'll be having them by tomorrow. So throughout the week, uh, we should have them because we are highlighted in the uh, Muslim journal for all of the efforts that we have been um, working towards in these last couple years. Uh, it's called the Path Towards Leadership. So um, everybody, next week, definitely, well, inshallah, we'll have the, um, the copies then. Um, Sunday. Look at study al Islam or join study al Islam at 10 a.m. 10 a. We should have we will have a talim at one o'clock on Sunday. Um, tomorrow in Richmond, they're going to have a second part to their Muslim American Heritage celebration. So if you can go there, try to attend. It's an hour and a half away, uh, but they're going to have a lot of food and fun there. So we want to support our brothers uh, and sisters there because they they came to our, our event in the pouring rain a couple of weeks ago. So we show support and I want to do that again. Uh, we want to build a bridge between all different communities. Um, and I, last, when I was there, I met uh, Amir Muhammad, who, is the, who has the Islamic Muslim Museum in DC. It's also a museum that he can um, transport. So he's going to Richmond tomorrow to show them some of the exhibits that he has. Inshallah, we'll have that here uh, one day soon. Uh, I definitely told him that we'd be interested in it um, just to know the history. Some of the things I mentioned last week and last week's clipboard, but he has a plethora, a plethora of information about Muslims in the Americas long before we ever heard of them. So um, that should be in the works. I think that's the only thing that I can remember right now. Uh, make do uh, for everyone. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Sister Sisters T. All right, I'm going to speak to the people back there, right? Anybody on, on the, phone, on, on the uh, call? For the sisters, there's the sisters' tea at Sunday at 11, 11.30. Okay, alhamdulillah. So then I ain't going to interfere with y'all when I do the ta'aleem. We'll just do it in here. Are y'all going to be in there? Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, ooh, you about getting everybody in bad trouble. Thank you. You saved me. Tomorrow is game night at... Six or seven, which one is it? Six o'clock. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm telling y'all, I gotta come out the last time we had it, man. It was great, great fun. 
bring your, uh, your significant other, bring your spouse, bring your kids. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm telling you. Uh, it was great, great fun the last time we did it, and inshallah, it'll be the same way tomorrow. Yes. Wa alaikum wasalam. What happened to the brother that had the man that had the eye injury? Is he alright? He is still. Uh, he was here a couple of weeks ago. I think. Um, I'm not sure if he's got a full recovery from his eye injury. Um, but he was here a couple of weeks ago. I think he's still up and running, inshallah. He's doing Juma today at, um, at Al Quba. Um, but make sure, again, that you make dua for Imam Asadi and for his wife. Both of them are not feeling well. So please make dua for them. Yes. Wa alaikum What's the status of our business proposal? Which business proposal? Next door. So the status on it. If you all, before you leave, go out and uh, check next door, uh, check the progress. The brother Jose is the contractor there. He's um, helping us in a lot of, in a lot of different areas. Uh, so I'm projecting maybe in the next month, all of the work will be done. Um, we're also looking, the sign should have been up by now. Uh, I'm gonna give the brother one more chance to do the sign, otherwise I'm gonna go to someone else. Cause I've asked him for over a month to do the sign for the uh, front of it. And if we have any money left over, we're gonna do a mural. But after, this, after the work is completed there, because they found some things, obviously, when you start pulling drywall apart, you start finding things behind there. So it's been a little bit more extensive than what they initially thought. But inshallah, in the next month, month and a half, the work should be done and we can start uh, the business up legitimately and everything going smoothly the way it should be. Uh, so I didn't buy, so we have equipment that we're gonna purchase for the store, but I didn't buy any of that yet until we are able to secure it, able to get uh, cameras and all those things. So first thing we're gonna do is get, the, get it up and running. I mean, get the uh, place renovated, and then we'll get up and running, inshallah. All right, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, that brother that just left there is, he works at, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Briani Hub, and that food is delicious, right? Um, so after Juma, we always we go there a couple of times to eat. So I guess he uh, came and checked us out.